Hi, thanks for listening. My name is Tim Whitehead. I'm an assistant professor of chemical engineering at Michigan State University. And to my right here is Kyle Tomek, who's the lead author on a paper recently accepted by Biotechnology and Bioengineering entitled Removal and Upgrading of Lignocellulosic Fermentation Inhibitors by In-Situ Biocatalysis and Liquid-Liquid Extraction. Okay, so as many of you know, the lignocellulosic biomass contains fermentation inhibitors which are released by biomass pretreatment and hydrolysis. Dilute substrate streams have been necessary to efficiently convert this biomass to valuable products. Right, thanks, thanks Kyle. Um, and uh, to, to overcome this, these dilute pro uh, substrate streams necessitate uh, dilute final product titers. Uh, to increase those product titers, uh, strain engineering has historically been done uh, and in the half dozen uh, last half dozen years, uh, really uh, new strain engineering, recombinating techniques, et cetera, uh, ha have been utilized to really overcome this problem. Um, while some really dramatic and successful advances have been made uh, by other research groups, uh, in general, this is still an unsolved problem. One of the big stumbling blocks is a class of these fermentation inhibitors known as the hydroxycinamic acids. These are molecules with, uh, that are phenolics with a carboxylic acid moiety, and they are toxic to most fermentative microbes. And so uh, what we show in this work is a general concept of combining uh, a catabolic pathway to destroy these hydroxycinamic acids uh, combined with a liquid-liquid extraction approach to remove the hydrophobic products uh, from the aqueous fermentation broth uh, to improve uh, fermentation characteristics. Okay, so first we quantify the toxicity of these hydroxycinamic acids in their decarboxylation products. So we compared ferulic acid and 4 vinyl glycol, and we put them into minimal media to simulate fermentation uh, conditions, and we tested E. coli and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And it was determined that 4 vinyl glycol was more toxic to microbial growth. Organic solvents were then screened for their ability to preferentially extract these hydroxycinamic acid decarboxylation products without um, affecting microbial growth or ethanol concentration. So partition, partition coefficients were calculated and uh, growth rates obtained to quantify these parameters uh, with tetradecane meeting our specifications. Um, an active pho uh, phenolic acid decarboxylase was expressed in E. coli and grown in sim these simulated fermentation conditions and maximum E. coli growth rates in the presence of ferulic acid were only observed with the addition of tetradecane. Great, thanks Kyle. And, and what this shows is just a really, uh, really cool approach combining um, metabolic engineering or, or strain engineering techniques with really classical bioprocess engineering. Uh, this this uh, introduction of a co-solvent stream to uh, remove toxic products is certainly not new. This was pioneered by work uh, done by Harvey Blanche in, in the 80s, among among other uh, among other researchers, uh, for sure. Uh, and what we expect to see uh, is that there are similar contributions uh, in future years that combine uh, these classical bioprocess engineering techniques uh, along with with uh, more advanced metabolic engineering concepts. Before we leave, I just would like to make a plug. Uh, we have uh, deposited all the plasmids resulting from this work in a uh, plasmid repository called Adgene, which you can find um, them, this online at adgene.org, and this is freely available for academic users, and we encourage other, other researchers to do likewise. Uh, with that, uh, Kyle and I would just like to say thanks for listening, Thank you. And, and thanks again. Bye.